Okay, so let's talk about balance. So, to start off with, um, balance is extremely important when you're uh, imaging. Maybe not quite so much if you're doing visual use, though it, it does help to be in good balance, especially for go-to uh, and for tracking. But if you want really good tracking, then you definitely want to make sure that your scope is in balance. Now, there's obviously two axes. You got the deck and you got your RA. And one of the first things you want to do is to make sure that you're balanced in your deck first. And there's a reason behind this. And I'll, I'll try to explain it the best way I can in the simplest terms. So right now, your my deck is in balance. You can see it just glides very nicely. And if I just let it sit still, it should hold into place. Um, and okay, wait a minute. So let me back up just a quick second. When you're balancing, make sure that all of your gear is attached. Okay, all of your gear. So your camera, uh, your guide scope, your guide scope camera, uh, your uh, dew heaters. Make sure that your dew shield is extended. Um, of course, make sure your cover is off, which my cover is on, but just for demonstration purposes. And, okay, so the reason why you're doing deck first, and you should always do deck first, is your center of gravity at this point, being parallel to the ground, is basically right here, okay? Right here. So if your deck is balanced, at that point, you should be able to balance your RA, right? That's what you're wanting. Now, if you don't balance your deck first, and let's say your point of balance is back here, okay, you no longer have a center line going to the center of gravity. Your center of gravity is back here. So what happens is, rather than going straight down your shaft, your gravity is going to be offset. And if it's offset like that, and you go to balance your, your counterbalance weight, the ba it's not going to be truly in balance. So you want to make sure that you balance your deck first. So you release up your clutches, go ahead and lock down. I got my cable sitting here. Lock down the RA and then balance your telescope. Now with refractors, there's a couple of ways you can balance it. Um, one of the ways that you can balance is by sliding your plate forward or back, or you can actually slide the tube through the rings in order to get uh, balance. Now, of course, on refractors, especially with like a triplet or a doublet, you're going to have the most of your the majority of your weight is going to be up here in the front where the glass is at. Um, I also would highly recommend that if you're using a Crafer focuser or if you're using like a feather touch or some sort of automatic focuser, bring your focus to about to the where you would normally sit because this is going to affect your balance as well. So if I were to loosen this up, let's see if I can do this one-handed. If I were to loosen this up and then rack in my focuser, like so, you'll see how the center of balance is now changing. It's now going back to the front. Sorry about my fingers there. So it's going to start going to the front. You don't want to do that. So make sure you're racked out to where you typically are going to be in focus. And there you go. Now, you should be back. You should be back into balance for the most part, right? Okay. When you're finished with that, and you bring your scope back up oh, again, trying to do this one hand, it's kind of a pain in the butt. You know what? Let me do it the way I'm supposed to do it. Hand on the top, roll right up. So once you've got it locked in, go ahead. Uh, of course, you're going to adjust your your saddle plate, slide the saddle, or you're going to adjust your rings, loosen your rings, and slide your tube. Once everything's done, you're going to lock it back down again, which I'm getting a little confused here. You're going to lock it back down again and then rotate it and balance your RA like so. And that's all there is to it. Make sure all your cords, all your cabling is in, is on there. So I mean typically you're going to you're going to balance, you know, when you're set up, but Connect everything. Connect all your cables. Connect all your, your power supplies to your camera. Um, typically what I will do uh, on my setup is once I've gotten everything attached, I actually loop 
uh, my power cables, my camera cables and everything, I loop back up to here. And then on the nose here is I'll put a couple of pieces of Velcro, wrapped Velcro strips and hold it all together. A little side safety tip, by the way. Your camera and your filter wheel hanging off uh, the back here with your little thumb screws. You know, sometimes in the middle of the night, these can loosen up. Uh, whether it's hot, it's cold, what, whatever might happen. And this could slide out, right? And you don't want to drop your camera into the ground with your focus wheel. Not going to be good. Or, you know, if you got your, your cables up here, it's all going to go to the ground. So I would recommend some sort of little safety strap just to go down and around your camera and then attach it somehow. Uh, what I do is I attach it to uh, the thumb screws and reason being is they're not going to go anywhere. And when you're racked in or out in your focuser, you don't want to attach it like say up to here or something like that. But then because you're going to, uh, you don't give the moment to movement for the camera, right? So you're going to be pulling against uh, your cords. So you don't want to do that. So just extend it out and then attach it to the points that are going to move with the camera. Um, yeah, so again, all cables attached, all, anything that you have on here, you know, do shield, uh, excuse me, do heaters, uh, your control box, anything like that. Make sure everything is installed. If you go to add something afterwards, it's going to take your balance off. All right, be right back. Okay, so... Let's talk about something else about balancing. Let's talk about east bias. Um, it kind of took me a little while to, to comprehend this. <laughs> and uh, I think I'm a smart guy, but I, I really don't know. Um, I guess it depends. So east bias balancing is putting weight to the east side of your pier. So whatever is on the east side should be a little bit heavier than the other side. Um, there's a couple of ways you can do this. One that you can do is to actually put a little bit of weight um, on the telescope itself. So if you want to attach a, a little weight here or on the back side here, what, whichever you want to do to where you create a little bit of bias. Um, and it's not much, it, it's just a little bit. And, and the reason behind this is to take up the slack in your worm gear, right? So basically what you're doing is you're putting a little bit of pressure against it and, and you're eliminating uh, backlash by doing that. You're keeping the gears meshed together at all times. So whatever is falling on the east side of your pier or your, your tripod is where you want to have a little bit of extra weight. So a couple of things that people do is uh, they use like an ankle weight. So they'll attach an ankle weight somewhere on the tube itself. And when your telescope is on the east side, and then when the telescope goes to the west side, they'll move it and put an ankle weight down here. So basically what you're having, again, you're, you've got a little bit of down pressure here which is going to keep your uh, gear engaged, the worm block or what, whatever kind of gearing system that you have. It's the same thing on the other side. Um, when it's on this side, you're pulling a little bit. You're putting enough pressure to where it's keeping the gear, <laughs> it's keeping the gear engaged. And again, it's to hopefully eliminate any kind of backlash. Um, what some people do is when they're balancing overall, they'll go ahead and uh, bring their weight up just a little bit to create the imbalance. Um, but then the problem with that is when you go, when you're switching sides, you do a meridian flip. At that point, you either need to extend your weight back down or put some sort of counterweight on it. Um, now, I've tried that in the past and um, I've wound up you know, screwing up and uh, I've had the weights fall off. Um, I've had the weight shift, and of course it throws off your guiding, throws everything off, creates a vibration. So there is a method that's called uh, the string method. And th this is the string method right here. And basically what it does is it creates 
it, you literally have a, a, a little string and what I've done is just, I've attached it um, to this uh, nut right here, or excuse me, this bolt right here, and it goes around the RA, right? And then just comes down and hangs to a weight. Now I've got a two and a half pound weight on there. And what I did was I did a good balance in the beginning. And then you'll see with just a little bit of the imbalance, the scope just slightly starts to fall, right? Just ever so slightly is putting some weight against it. Now, when you go to the other side and what's happening is the weight is pulling down, right? And that's where you're getting your east bias. So when you're imaging to the west, now you're coming, your counterweight needs to be balanced to pull, to pull down. Well, the string is pulling up the weight, okay? And that's creating the weight on the east side. So as you're going along, and we'll see it again, there's just a little bit of weight, just enough to where it's creating just a little bit of the imbalance. And that's how you can keep your east side always balanced. And you don't have to swap ankle weights around or unbolt a weight up there, bolt a weight down here. I mean, you could, for the most part, um, when you're balancing east, uh, is bring this out or bring it in, excuse me, and creating just a, a tab of an imbalance, putting a weight on top of the scope, which will pull it. And then, you know what? I got that backwards. I'm sorry. So when you're, when you're balancing, we're in your RA balance is to pull your counterweight, um, out just a little bit, just a little bit, and then put your weight on, on top of the scope, which will create the same effect. You'll get that little bit of drift. And then when you come to the other side, rather than having to adjust that weight, you just remove your weight from the scope. I've just found that the string method is just a little bit easier. And, you know, you can kind of see where it's pulling back against there. So you don't want to go in into anything that that's, um, you know, moving or spinning. You don't want it to get caught. But this whole section right here doesn't actually move. It moves with the entire RA. So you can pull it up a little bit. Um, and put it into the groove and put a little you know piece of tape on the top to hold it up into place a little piece of duct tape or something um so yeah that's east bound that's east bias balancing and and again just that little bit of weight and as you can see i mean earlier i was i was you know nice and balanced and you can see just a little bit of weight there is just enough so as the scope is moving to keep the gears engaged so you eliminate your backlash. So uh, try that. I'm sure some people have already heard about it, but I guess I was just going to show you how I did it. All right. Thanks for watching.